Will the gentleman Mr. yield for a couple of questions? Mr. Rodriguez, do you yield for I questions? Yield. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, um, so the attorney's fees section, you're requiring indemnification for attorney's fees. The current amendment as it stands now uh, allows the attorney general to step in and, or, or actually requires the attorney general to defend the school district, correct? I believe that's true. Okay. Um, so now in, does that, I'm not sure that that says that a school district couldn't as you know, have another attorney also representing right. them to work hand in hand with the attorney general. I but, don't know. But what kind of lawsuit in particular are you, are you envisioning that this would apply to? I would probably, uh, uh, discrimination based on discrimination. Discrimination. Okay. Yes. Is there any provision of state law? What, what, what type of discrimination are you talking about? Well, I think we're, I, in my view, we're clearly establishing a separate but equal type of situation. And whether or not this amendment is geared towards the, stated in, 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 by word, transgender students, that's who's going to be impacted by this so you're, predominantly. So your protected class is based on gender identity that you envision the discrimination lawsuit? Well, sex. Sex, can you name one court decision on a federal or state level that's held that sex discrimination under the Civil Rights Act is, is, uh, well, is found by Respectfully, uh, I think that's facilities. beside the point. The fact is, the matter is that we're requiring the school district to do something now. If, if the school district sues or the attorney general representing the school district uh, loses, then we need to indemnify whether it's attorney's fees, whether it's other damages or anything else, I'm, that's what we need. We need to have that I'm, in the books. I'm so trying to figure our school out. Districts. I'm trying to figure out what law they would lose under because you're talking about sex, but there's never been any cases that have held that just that separate facilities for men and women are discriminatory. So what you must be talking about is, is gender identity as a protected class, and there's no state law holding that gender identity is a separate protected class. Correct? That they would be able to sue under. Correct? I'm not sure that's true. I mean, I think well, I, it's, it's certainly sure true, true because enough. there have been bills proposed in this legislature that would have changed that law. And also on a federal level, gender identity is not under federal law a protected class, correct? I mean, I'm, so, I think so that we that need to indemnify our school districts. We're asking them to do something here. It's brand new. You could, you, hopefully you would agree with me that we're not offering to pay for these additional facilities that might be required. We're not, we're not writing a check to our school districts to help pay for this. The least we can do right. in the event they do get sued. I don't, it doesn't matter whether or not we can have a discussion on, on, the, on the, you know, the, the constitutionality of it or whatever, but if there's a chance that they're sued and if they lose, then we should indemnify them. That's, where, that's what this amendment simply does. But, but you're talking about indemnifying them under a hypothetical law that doesn't exist on a state level, on a federal level, and I don't think you can point to a single decision where there's been an award of damages in the state of Texas. Do, do we actually do that? Yeah. I believe, uh, I believe that uh, on Sanctuary City, Senate Bill 4, didn't, I believe we had in the provision there, we indemnified the cities there. It is, was there a protected class in that one? Yes, protected class is race, specifically. I know, I, because so we should be indemnifying them. Uh, it wasn't based on no, national race. Race is a protected class under state and federal law. And sex However, is gender well. identity sex, is not. Sex is is, is protected class. Sex is man and woman, right. but not gender identity, which is what you're contemplating. Well, now we're going to get into the semantics of what does it mean to be transgendered, and I, that's not what this is about. This is this is just about indemnifying school districts in the event that they lose a lawsuit. That's what this is all about. Right under a law that has never that doesn't exist. Well, statutes can change over time. We don't know. I don't okay, know. Okay, so under a hypothetical future lawsuit is what you're, you're trying to defend against. Fine. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Ellis, for what purpose? I know earlier there was a request to have Ms. Thompson's uh, comments reduced to writing, and I would request that all comments and dialogue related to the Patty Amendment be reduced to writing. Members heard the motion. Is there objection? Chair is none to order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I think this is a very a simple, uh, good public policy to try to indemnify our school districts. All session long, we've been doing, uh, we've been passing bills that make our school, school districts do things, and we're not helping to pay for it. This is simply indemnifying them in the, in the case of a lawsuit. I think this is good public policy, uh, not even getting into the debate about transgendered students in school and bathrooms facilities. This is about good public policy, helping our school districts in the event of a lawsuit. In which, the, in which the Attorney General, uh, whether they represent them uh, would, uh, or not, may, they may lose. And so let's, let's just indemnify them. It's that simple. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.